About 60 miles south of Chicago is a quiet town, Kankakee, Illinois, with about 26,000 residents. On the surface, it comes off as a place that doesn't have to deal with the issues that the big city of Chicago faces, including gangs, drugs, and violence. However, on the morning of August 26, 2021, the Latin Kings gang, an infamous street gang that has plagued the streets of New York, Chicago, and many other cities, would have a broad daylight shooting in front of the town's very famous and now infamous courthouse that would shock, stun, and disgust many of the residents and leave no doubts that, yes, Kankakee, Illinois, just like many other small towns in America, does deal with a lot of the same issues that big cities do face, and they could no longer ignore it. Yeah, it was crazy. It was Like I said, it was 50 shots from the beginning to end, and right at the end there was at least 30 to finish it. That ran out, and he ended up beating him with the gun. Wow, total chaos outside a Kankakee County courthouse. Two people are dead. Another person hurt after an all out shooting in the middle of the day. And it appears this may have had nothing to do with the courthouse itself. Brittany Garzillo is live in Kankakee with late details here. Brittany. Yeah, Anthony and Tia, it's been hours since that shooting happened, and just now law enforcement are finally starting to kind of wrap up the scene here, taking down some of that caution tape from the shooting that happened this morning. We know that two suspects were taken into custody at about 9.15 this morning. Kankakee City Police say they responded to a shots-fired call outside of the Kankakee County Courthouse. As police were responding, an officer arrested one person who was armed with a gun, a second person who fled the scene was also arrested. Two people were shot and killed. Police say they are both men in their mid-20s. Another person was shot and is at a nearby hospital. We're told his injuries are unknown, but at about 1 p.m., police said that he was in surgery. Police say multiple guns were found at the scene, and this happened at a busy time of day as people were going to and from the courthouse. Right now, police are interviewing witnesses and trying to locate more. They're asking anyone with information to come forward. At this time, we believe there's no reasonable threat to the community. We think we have both suspects in custody. However, we're still in the early stages of this investigation, and we think that um, more information is going to develop later on. I mean, it's a tragic event for the people of the city of Kankakee, and uh, we're going to do our best to solve it and put it all together and see if we can really figure out what happened here today. Now, Kankakee School District 111 schools were all on lockdown today because of the shooting. But according to the district's Facebook page, that lockdown was lifted a few hours ago. And we are expecting to hear an update from police in about an hour at 5 o'clock. And we're hoping to learn more about what led up to the shooting, the motive, the suspects, and more on the victims. We begin this hour 18 with breaking developments in a shootout outside the Kankakee County Courthouse. We just learned what led to that gunfire and who was behind the attack. Let's go right to CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey to break down what happened. Megan. Right, Brad and Erica, they were members of the same gang, and it was related to some type of feud. Two of them were from the same family, Miguel and Victor Andrade. They were with a third person coming to a court hearing today. As they're leaving the courthouse, they were approached by another man named Antonio Hernandez. Now, police say Hernandez shot and killed 26-year-old Victor Andrade. His relative, 23-year-old Miguel Andrade, then went to his car, pulled out a gun, and shot and killed Hernandez. Another man was taken into custody, but it turned out that he was not connected to this shooting. He was taken into custody on a separate matter. Shell casings littered the street and the sidewalk afterwards. One of the victims died in the middle of the street here on Merchant, the other in the parking lot across from the old jail. Just the mere fact that these individuals would come to a courthouse where obviously disputes are supposed to be resolved civilly, in, in the rear of the courthouse starts shooting individuals that they had some type of beef with. It's, I think it just shows what's going on nationwide right now. Now, it was bustling out here this morning. Many people coming into and out of court. Many people saw and heard what was going on. And they're saying it's remarkable that more people were not hurt. Um, I was a police officer for about 12 years before I went to law school. Well, I saw several of the other attorneys that I know, um, you know, ducking and seeking cover and just, you know, scrambling. Um, there were there were several people outside when it, when it was all going on. We heard pop 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 pop, and then it stopped for a second. Then it was pop 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 pop. People are going to court. Kids are going to school. It's yeah, it was it was senseless. 
Now, police say it was a 20-year-old man who was with the two Andrades going to court who was shot by Hernandez. Right now, we do not have a condition update. Brad? Okay, CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey. Megan, thank you. Gang members led to a double murder outside a Kankakee County courthouse today. And WGN's Patrick Elwood joins us now live with more details. Pat? Uh, good evening to you from Kankakee. Authorities say it started when three men went into court and then as they were exiting, they were met by a rival gang member and then a barrage of bullets. A police evidence technician with a long gun recovered at a Kankakee crime scene. And they're right on the north side of the jail in the parking lot. It's an active shooter, active shooter. The time was 9.45 a.m. when the trouble began. Antonio Hernandez and Miguel Andrade then engaged in a running gun battle um, on the south lawn of the courthouse and into a parking lot. During interviews, investigators say they determined that three men had gone to court for a hearing. When they were leaving, they were approached by 24-year-old Antonio Hernandez, who with multiple weapons in hand, shot and killed a 26-year-old man identified as Victor Andrade. Like it was just pop, 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 pop. It was nonstop. Alita Lowe runs a catering business in the area in close proximity to the shooting. I was hoping it was the roofer's gun, nail gun. Together with one of her delivery drivers, found out that it wasn't a roofer's nail gun. When I came out, I could see there was one guy down there, and then there was another guy laying in the middle of the street right here. Bullet shell casings, evidence markers could be seen throughout the area. Police say after Hernandez killed Victor Andrade, Miguel Andrade, a relation of some sort, went to his car and got a long gun, caught up with Hernandez, and began shooting him. And when he ran out of bullets, that is when the bludgeoning began as well. Moments later, Miguel Andrade, after that, surrendered to police. I just know that when he ran out of, when he ran out of ammo, he went over to him and continued to bludgeon him to death. All three photos of the men you just saw were released by police today based on previous run-ins, they say, with law enforcement. Kankakee Mayor Christopher Curtis. Unfortunately, it's becoming an all too often occurrence that has to end, and it has to end quickly. I spoke to the Kankakee County Sheriff Mike Downey today, who tells me that things could have been much worse, as bad as they were, because there were a lot of innocent people just coming and going from work, coming and going from the courthouse who could have been struck by that gunfire as well. We're live in Kankakee tonight, Patrick Elwood, WGN News, Ray and Micah. Terrell, we can now confirm that the Kankakee City Police have several suspects in custody after this incident that began about 9.45 this morning. That time frame from the Sheriff of Kankakee, Mike Downey, he gave the initial confirmation that this occurred in the county courthouse complex. It was actually in an outdoor area, we believe, between the jail and the courthouse. The first indication a while back that this was a fatal incident came with the deployment of the cane or the cook the rather Kankakee County coroner and now of course we've confirmed two dead and one wounded and this late news that the Kankakee City Police are reporting to have several suspects in custody city officials in Kankakee initially put this out as an active shooter incident they evacuated or at least locked down city buildings and county offices in the vicinity of this shooting uh, that you see on the street, it does not appear to currently be an active shooter situation. The authorities are saying that the public safety is not in danger at this point. They're calling it safe and secure. Again, not an active shooter situation, but clearly it was for a short period of time, resulting in two dead and one wounded. The Kankakee County coroner on the scene. Authorities say now several seconds. Continue to follow that breaking news out of Kankakee tonight. That's where a deadly shooting happened outside the Kankakee courthouse this morning. And police shed some new light on the circumstances that all led up to that explosion of gunfire. And WGN's Dana Rebick has been following the scene all morning. She joins us now with the very latest. Dana. <clears throat> Well, we now know a lot more about what uh, happened this morning. We do know that this was the result of an internal gang conflict, according to Kankakee Police. Two of the men involved came here to the courthouse for a hearing this morning, and when they were walking back outside, they say an armed man opened fire on them, killing one of them. One of the men being targeted ran to his car and grabbed a weapon, and this shootout continued. 
got shots fired on the north side, the north side of the old jail. Uh, at first I was um, inside the building by the south exit, the glass doors. I heard several shots. Uh, not far from me. Attorney Eric Davis, who was a former normal Illinois police officer, knew right away there was an active shooter outside. He glanced out the doors and saw two victims on the ground. Uh, a little bit later, while we were still in lockdown, I was able to, to peek back outside and I, I saw a sheet covering up uh, both of the, the people that I saw laying down, so it kind of confirmed that unfortunately the, the worst had happened. The two male Hispanic victims were shot dead, both in their mid-20s. Police say two armed men opened fire on East Merchant Street in between the courthouse and the Kankakee County Jail. Roofers who were working on a building across the street saw the whole thing unfold. Yeah, the two roofers were up there, and I guess when they, he um, saw the shooters, he yelled at them, so they turned around and shot back towards them and hit that third car over there. A third victim was taken to a hospital where he was undergoing surgery this afternoon. Witnesses say one suspect had a long rifle that looked like an AK-47. This afternoon, we could see an officer who appeared to be a crime scene technician holding a weapon of that description with a high-capacity magazine attached. Area schools were placed on lockdown this morning, but police quickly apprehended both suspects and secured the scene, saying there was no further threat to the community. Well, they're all members of the same gang, so there's some type of internal feud with them that um, we, it's been long ongoing feud between them. So this is, I guess, one way they thought they could resolve it. And we now know the identities of these people involved. 23-year-old Miguel Andrade of Kankakee is in custody at the Jerome Combs Detention Center. He is the one who was shot at and grabbed a gun from his car. 26-year-old Victor Andrade from Kankakee is dead. He is related to the man in custody, but police would not say if they were brothers or otherwise related. And 24-year-old Antonio Hernandez of Waukegan is dead. He is the armed man who started the shooting and a 28 year old man is still in the hospital. That is the very latest here in Kankakee. Our Patrick Elwood is on scene as well and will be bringing you the very latest on this story tonight at 9 and 10. Reporting live, Dana Rebic, back to you in the studio. What's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode of Green Lake Gang TV. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel. Uh, I want to give you a quick update. Many of you saw me put up that video of uh, the same story I did about the Mexican Mafia's uh, member whose wife was killed. That's because, guys, YouTube's really messing with channels like mine. Um, I put the video up over a week ago. Everything was great. All of a sudden, a few days ago, um, it got flagged for ad suitability issues. I put in a review. Four or five days later, I still have zero answers. So I just had to do a re-upload. I took the old one down. Just one of those things you got to deal with when, when you got channels like mine. So that's kind of why um, you might be seeing that video that has kind of different pictures. But it's the same video, just letting you guys know. It is what it is. You chop it up to the game and you move on. So today, we're going to be going to Kankakee, Illinois. We're going to be talking about a broad daylight shooting in front of a courthouse in front of uh, the Kankakee, Illinois County Courthouse that dealt with former Latin Kings gang member, current Latin Kings gang members, and the ensuing story that would play out. Um, and the shootout would play out li like a movie. We're going to quickly do a little background on the almighty Latin Kings and Queen Nation, also known as simply Latin Kings. It was a gang active primarily in the United States. It's also got international footholds as well. It was founded by Puerto Ricans in Chicago, in particular the Humboldt Park area of Chicago in 1954. They are the, one of the largest Hispanic and Latino street gangs and prison gangs worldwide. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the U.S., the Latin Kings operate two umbrella factions, the King Motherland in Chicago faction, headquartered in Chicago, and the Bloodline faction based in New York. Now, many of you think of the New York faction, you think of King Blood, Luis Felipe, uh, but this thing actually started in Chicago. So, and that is still the case to this day. Um, over 20, over 30, over 40,000 members um, they're all over. They're in 15 cities in five states. When I read this, it's probably honestly more than that. That's just what they can verify. Um, it's got a significant presence in the prison system, just like many street gangs do. Again, like I said, they were found in the Humboldt Park area of Chicago in 1954 by Ramon Santos, um, a Puerto Rican. You know, they tried to basically have a progressive movement, okay? And they wanted to overcome racial discrimination, just like so many of these other prison and street gang guys that we talk about. 
They are held back. They are discriminated against. They, these guys in particular were going against Greek and Italian greaser gangs. I thought the Greek part was literally really interesting. Um, so, yeah, you know, and they've been around ever since. Like I said, they still have a very strong presence in Chicago. And that brings us to the modern day case that we're going to be talking about on August 26, 2021. Cousins Miguel and Victor Andrade, they were leaving Kankakee County Courthouse, which at the time when I was reading through this, I really had to read through this to find out who the third man was. His name was Andre Glass. Um, And anybody that knows court, unfortunately, I do. had many, many court, excuse me, court hearings I had to go to. You have court in the morning and you have court in the afternoon, okay? So, where I live, you have court that starts at around 9, 9.30. You also have the afternoon, which is about 1 to 1.30. You got to go. They do roll call. You check in. Yeah, I'm here. Depending on the severity of the case, depending if you're in big boy court, superior court, or you're in low-level traffic court. But regardless, you're still in court. So that's what was going on. Uh, these three guys are there uh, for a court hearing. <clears throat> Excuse me. They leave at around 9.45 a.m. when they are approached excuse me, by a active Latin king, Antonio Hernandez, who quickly, quickly turned things up to a 10. He opens fire, shooting and killing 26-year-old Victor Andrade. This is where things get interesting. Victor's cousin, 23-year-old Miguel Andrade, starts taking off, booking it to his car to get his own weapon. A witness to all of this, mind you, there were dozens of witnesses, including law enforcement, courtroom workers. This happened right outside of the county courthouse, okay? States that, excuse me, Miguel Andrade pulls out, quote, a long gun opening fire on Antonio Hernandez in self-defense. And I'm like, oh yeah, in self-defense, retaliation, shooting, killing him, all right? Now, you have You have Victor Andrade laid out in the middle of the street. You've got Hernandez over by the parking lot, uh, by the jail, okay, because court is directly, you know, a lot of times the big boy superior court is going to be right there within the jail, okay? So if, you know, you plead out or they're going to take you in that day, if you violate some sort of pretrial release, you violate bond, that's why the jail is right there, so they can (laughs) can take your ass to lock up. So the shooting erupted. And, and basically, this is what they knew right away. They were all former Latin Kings members or current Latin Kings members. Antonio Hernandez, the one who approached the three guys, was an active Latin King member. Okay? So they exit the courthouse around 945. Antonio Hernandez approaches him. He's in possession of a, multiple weapons, it said. Authorities said he begins firing, fatally shooting Victor Andrade in the street. That's why I'm saying Victor Andrade is laid out in the street. Okay? He also shot somebody on the sidewalk. Kankakee Police Chief Robin Passwater so Miguel Andrade then grabs a firearm from his own car, the long gun. He begins shoot chasing Antonio Hernandez. And this is seriously, guys, like a movie, sparking a running gun battle on the courthouse lawn. Hernandez, 24, was fatally shot in a nearby parking lot. Police officers who saw this, they confront Miguel Andrade. He surrendered peacefully, okay? And, and I would too, right? Your, your self-defense. Your cousin just gets shot in front of you. He's trying to kill you. He's trying to kill your friend, Andre Glass. You're like, no, not going out like this. You run to your car and you, 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 know, you do what you got to do, okay? They get ambulanced by 10 a.m., uh, you know, 15 minutes later, excuse me, the other, t- you know, Victor Andrade is dead. Antonio Hernandez is dead. Andre Grass is still alive. And um, so is Miguel Andrade, okay, who did the shooting. Now, Victor, who did pass away, 26-year-old Victor Andrade, was Antonio Hernandez's intended target. So he, you know, unfortunately, Hernandez did get his target. Armed with multiple weapons, Hernandez shoots and kills Victor and seriously wounds the other man, Glass, before being shot. Now, here's the interesting part and the pretty brutal part of this. It said Miguel Andrade, as they were running and shooting at each other, Runs out of bullets, but he does enough damage to where Antonio gets knocked down. He then runs up to Antonio and begins bludgeoning him to death with the butt of his rifle. This was all right in front of people. Excuse me, guys. I'm sorry. I'm losing my voice. Police say Miguel used an assault rifle that he retrieved from a vehicle after Hernandez began shooting. Miguel surrendered peacefully by two moments police officers. 
Police said the shootout was a result of a gang's internal fight as Victor, all right, Peter Victor, the first one who died, was a former member of the Latin Kings. And like I said, Antonio Hernandez was a current member. Quote, it's shocking for us to see that, Chief Passwater said, of the shooting occurred so close to an area with heavy police presence. Remember, guys, right in front of the courthouse. Quote, it shows what's going on nationwide. There's no respect for other lives. And I, and I will attest to that. I definitely believe violence is ratcheted up with the advent of social media, with guys just not giving a you-know-what. It goes down anytime, anywhere. Um, you know, and you got to give it to Hernandez and a lot of these guys, right? There's so many fake gangsters out there. These guys were not that. These guys got busy. These guys were strapped. These guys came to court ready to go. And and to be honest, I give Miguel Andrade all the credit in the world. You get ambushed leaving court. Your cousin shot and killed. Your friend's shot and almost killed. You have the presence of mind to run to your car, grab your gun, shoot back. I mean, it is what it is at that point. You're in a fight for your life, okay? Um, the chief went on to say four men, they all had ties to the same gang, hence, okay, Latin Kings, but it's unclear why they had a falling out. All right. The Andrade's both lived in Kankakee while Hernandez is believed to be from Wakugan. Okay. Um, I didn't know much about where Andre Glass is from, but we will get to him in a minute. All right. Now it did come out that they didn't believe what was going on in the courtroom, like because maybe people are thinking, well, maybe Hernandez shows up because uh, Victor Andrade is in there testifying against him. We're giving information against him. Well, no, it came out that that was not the case. Okay, that it came out that they were not the case. Court records show that Victor Andrade, 26 years old, he'd been charged earlier in the year with uh, possession of some things he was not supposed to be in possession of. YouTube won't let me go too much into it. Um, and he had some other cases that were were not good and would get you X'd out of a gang. I'll just leave it at that and would put your ass in PC. Now, he had a court appearance scheduled to take place 15 minutes prior to the gun battle. Andrade, a 25-year-old kanky man who was fatally shot in his home earlier this year. Oh, though police said they didn't know how the Andrades were related, they are listed as brothers in an obituary for Alex Andrade, another family member who was killed uh, in his home earlier that year. So this whole family's tied into gangs. It said they were brothers. They were not. They were just cousins, okay? Now, they also said that the gunfight wasn't connected to that other family member's homicide. Multiple firearms were recovered from the scene, including assault rifles. Um, You saw that in the news clips, guys. Um, they interviewed a resident who'd come to the courthouse to fire his mother's will, told the Tribune, told the Tribune, she heard the shots as she came out. I heard a pop said the woman who was asked not to be named. He was in the parking lot by the old jail and he was walking backwards and was quote, just shooting. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy. So this plays out now, originally Miguel Andrade. Okay. Is tried or not tried but he's charged with second degree murder which a lot of people said no way should not happen self-defense all the way all the way and thankfully and I do agree with this I try not to give my opinion too much but no way he should have been October 2022 the surviving gunman involved in the August 2021 shooting near Kankakee County Courthouse pled guilty Monday to the charge of reckless discharge of a firearm which i think is fair yes he shouldn't have been shooting off but he also should have been because he's trying to live i think that's totally fair um he's now miguel he was 23 at the time of the shooting he was 24 now when he pled out he agreed to plead guilty he was sentenced to a little over 800 days he'd already been in there for like 400 days and he actually chose to a bench trial when a bench trial for you guys that don't know a lot of people think of a jury trial 12 people 12 of your peers they're going to decide you can also choose a bench trial which the evidence gets presented the same way but ultimately the judge will decide if you're innocent or guilty and what your punishment should be and that's actually what uh what he chose so it says attorneys for both sides met monday he was released from custody later that day because like i said he'd already been in there for a long amount of time um they were debating his innocence or guilt. A lot of people, including the attorney, said she was very, very pleased with him getting this. Um, and it said, quote, 
However, as an attorney, it was one of the best dispositions I've ever gotten in my career for a client on this type of level of a case, short of a trial. Disposition is the outcome, okay? So she's basically saying, we didn't have to go to trial. We were able to knock this down because, you know, the prosecution saw that, yes, he's an active gang member. Yes, he had a gun that he shouldn't have had. But ultimately, he wouldn't have used the gun if he hadn't been getting shot at. Now, here's what's crazy. If you notice what I said in the beginning, the only survivor member... Well, people are like, well, what about Andre Glass? Well, Glass was killed in a July 15th shooting in 2022. So, man, there's so many layers to this. Um, But at the end of the day, it's about a dispute. Someone's a former member. Someone's a current member. Something's going on. Violence erupts. And then it becomes, you do what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do to survive. So, yeah. The only one that survived, Miguel Andrade, he pleads out. Reckless endangerment, reckless, you know, discharge of a firearm. He's a free man. Uh, You know, you hope he gets his life together because, as you can see, Andre Glass is killed a year later. Miguel saw his cousin get killed right in front of his eyes. And Tony Hernandez is murdered. It's just a crazy, crazy story. And then I want you, I'm going to leave you guys with this. Picture, (laughs) you're going to court for your traffic ticket or like that lady with her will And all of a sudden this happens. It just gives you an idea. And it shows that even though this little Kankakee is 60 miles south of Chicago, gangs, violence, man, that stuff is everywhere. It doesn't matter. Always be safe. Always keep your eyes open. Protect yourselves at all time, guys. Until next time. Peace.